Konnichiwa. Watashi no namae wa Borek-san Jeff Desu. And I've just exhausted my knowledge of Japanese language. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. How many are here? Quick show of hands. How many are, are here for the deep dive on the Linux kernel, the technical deep dive on the Linux kernel? Raise your hand. You're in the wrong room. Uh, we're here to talk to you today about containers and the uh, OpenStack Magnum project and the involving uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, let's do a real show of hands. Now, how many have heard of the um, containers? You'd have to be living under a rock if you haven't heard about containers by now. It's the hottest topic in the IT industry and kind of has been for the last uh, 18, 24 months now. Um, so we're very pleased to be here to chat with you about it. Uh, I want to quickly go over the agenda. So we're going to go a little bit into the history and kind of help frame the argument for some of you um, who it may be a bit new to. We're going to talk how containers fit into OpenStack and in particular the Magnum project. And we're going to go into a little bit of what's happening in the um, uh, area of standards around containers and a lot of activity. You heard of probably the uh, OCI or the CNCF. We'll talk about a, a bit about that. Uh, we'll also talk about um, where this is going to go in the future a bit. And then hopefully we'll have some time for uh, a little Q&A at the end. I'd like to start, though, by introducing uh, a couple of my colleagues who are here with me, uh, Megan Kostick and Dan Crook. They're both part of uh, IBM's Open Technologies team that I also am a part of. We ro roll up to uh, IBM vice president named uh, Angel Diaz. And um, what they focus on is specifically engagements with clients, helping them form their strategy around emerging open technologies. And the area I focus on is working with our partnerships and business development. My background's engineering, and I've done some coding in the past, but it's been quite a while. Um, I do work uh, with the OCI and the CNCF, as well as I uh, am the chair currently of the Docker Governance Advisory Board. So with that, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Dan, who's going to kick things off. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks for the introductions, Jeff. Uh, so for the few of you in the room that are not familiar with containers, uh, we're just going to take a quick look at the technology and why it's so exciting. So um, as you've been watching probably OpenStack for the last few years, as we've gone from Cloud 1.0 to Cloud 2.0, where the original basis of virtualization was virtual machines, um, traditional applications in these cloud environments, um, they basically required a lot of um, duplicate resource usage on the hosts. Uh, they, rely, they relied a lot on um, copying entire applications many times, uh, and they required emulation of the hardware. So on the left side of this diagram, in the traditional virtual uh, machine virtualization model, um, there's an entire guest OS that's copied multiple times for each virtual machine that you're putting on a host um, Nova compute node. Uh, there's a whole hypervisor that's emulating and translating the calls to the hardware for you. Um, and it leads to large size images as well to transfer the entire guest operating system. So with containers, you're looking at basically a, a magnitude of um, much better density, as well as faster startup of the applications, faster scaling, scale down, and uh, much easier deployment of applications because they're much smaller and therefore easier to transfer. So you're getting a lot of benefits with this shared kernel usage of the containers, but there are some drawbacks there that um, expose um, security vector, the attack service becomes a little bit larger. And that's where um, OpenStack Magnum comes in uh, to help ideally host containers for you. So containers aren't new, even if they're the hottest thing in the last couple of years. Um, if you're new to them, you may think that Docker uh, is synonymous with containers. Um, but there's a long history of this virtualization that goes back even to the start of Unix. Um, but about 15 years ago, they really in earnest started um, basically building on the old Unix CH root concept where the file system was segmented between processes into something where the actual processes themselves were isolated. So this concept came from FreeBSD and was translated over to Linux uh, around 2000. But it required patching the Linux kernel. Uh, it was pretty deep into the lower level aspects of Linux, so it didn't really have much uptake back then. 
Um, at the same time, um, in System 5 Unix, Solaris was also innovating with operating system virtualization. So we in, they introduced this idea of snapshots, cloning of um, individual virtualized instances. And building upon this, in 2006, uh, Google put together a paper on process containers, uh, which were a way to group together processes to have them share resources independently on that operating system from uh, other um, processes there. Red Hat introduced user namespaces with uh, namespaces, and this allowed the virtualization of users. So within a container, you could now allow root privileges that never could escape that container. Um, and IBM uh, introduced a bit of tooling around that, bringing these concepts together. Uh, but there were still some questions about security and user friendliness of actually uh, working with those tools. Uh, so that brings us to Docker, um, which really brought the mainstream, both by making the tooling a lot easier, but also coming up with the concept of images, and images that can be built on with deltas so that you can iterate and um, basically take an application, package with the dependencies, build on it, and deploy it out to your production systems without, um, without as many dependencies. So with all those benefits of containers, um, naturally you'd see them uh, go into a lot of the brand new innovation um, that's been going into OpenStack over the past five years. One of the first places that containers showed up as they were seen as smaller individual units of compute was the Nova Docker driver. Um, so basically within Horizon, uh, from the Nova AP, uh, CLI tools, you could work with them. Images could be stored in Glance. Um, so it's basically an IaaS light. Individual containers just managed like virtual machines. Uh, a little later, we saw Heat enhanced to orchestrate the deployment of containers on top of Nova instances. Um, and more recently, um, we've seen the Cola project emerge to, to containerize the OpenStack control plane itself. So if you're familiar with um, starting with OpenStack, where you had one monolithic controller node that had all the services on it, you had maybe a network node that was separate, and you had n number of compute nodes, um, what Cola is letting you do is take all those services, spread them out over smaller resources, and um, enable you to treat them as microservices, scale them independently, aggregate them, uh, deploy them with zero downtime, uh, things like that. And um, newest is Murano. Um, if you're at the Vancouver Summit, um, it basically showed the marketplace, oops, the app catalog, and how users can consume containerized applications. But the most important focus of this talk right now is, uh, is OpenStack Magnum. And what Magnum is doing is taking a lot of the innovation in containers uh, and exposing them through the traditional OpenStack projects. So I'll hand it over here to colleague Megan to tell me more about uh, Magnum. Thank you, Dan. All right, I'm going to walk you guys through a timeline of containers in OpenStack over the past few years. So back in May 2014, the OpenStack container team was formed, and their main goal was how do we standardize the container environment in OpenStack. They wanted to provide consistent deployment of containers and have that familiar OpenStack project feel, as well as remove the risk of you know, choosing a single container strategy just because you know, it was just getting hot and we're not sure where it's all going. If you fast forward a year, the container networking team formed to specifically focus on consistent networking strategy for containers, and this is still <laughs> you know, something that's evolving. And just this last August at the OpenStack Silicon Valley conference, the main focus was on containers and where it's all going and how it fits into OpenStack. And as you all know, um, the OpenStack Liberty release just happened this October and the first production ready release of Magnum was included in that. So what is Magnum? It's OpenStack's container as a service solution, and it just provides your complete management for containers in OpenStack. It uses heat for the orchestration of the host machines. It implements multi-tenancy using Keystone, and it provides multi-host networking using Neutron. Right now, it supports some container orchestration engines that include Docker Swarm, Google Kubernetes, and Apache Mesos. 
The cool thing about Magnum is that along with its own APIs, it also exposes the native APIs of these container management um, solutions. This would include like your Docker CLI commands as well as your Kubernetes client commands. Right here up on the screen is kind of a high level view of the ar architecture of Magnum. As Dan stated earlier, it's very integrated with a lot of the mature um, OpenStack projects you've heard of. And this morning, as Jonathan Bryce flashed up on the screen, the adoption versus maturity of projects, it's continually changing. So Magnum was, you know, on the lower aspect there, being new and all. But some of the most common projects that it's integrated with are Heat, Nova, and Neutron. And it has that consistent OpenStack feel or layout, having the Magnum APIs, client, and conductor. So now that you got a brief history of containers and what um, Magnum is from a high-level perspective, we're going to switch gears, and Jeff's going to come up and talk about uh, the foundations and the work going on there. Thanks, Megan. And uh, if you're wondering why we're switching back, it's we have a philosophy it's harder to hit a moving target, so we're going to keep doing that. Um, so I want to make sure I meet expectations, though. How many have heard of the Open Container Initiative before? So about half. So I will spend a little bit of time, and I think we're doing good on time, so I will spend a little bit of time talking a little bit about that. I've got a, a small pun. I don't know if it'll transition, but you know, it's the good old saying, you know, I love standards in IT industry. There's so many to choose from. And if you think about that, it's like, well, wait a minute, is it standard or is there so many to choose from? You know, it represents a challenge, right? So why the Open Container Initiative? Um, so another quick show of hands. How many have been to a, a Linux conference? Linux Foundation conference, let me be specific. OK, not as much crossover as I thought there might have been. So this is a great uh, point to stop a, a bit and talk a little bit about that. Um, the whole idea behind containers uh, is that it's really revolutionized something that was fairly, you know, deep down in the Linux kernel, fairly, you know, gorpy, difficult to use. And yet, it's so important, and IBM and other companies feel that it's so critical to the evolution of the, how this infrastructure is going to evolve going forward that it really can't be, you know, left to any one single company to you know have control over and or you know struggle with trying to manage and so uh, a number of companies have come together under the umbrella of the linux foundation and it's not to try and create a whole heavy bureaucracy of overhead in helping to define containers and standardize them the real goal about doing it as a collaboration project of the linux foundation is to provide the leverage of that existing body, but only a small, efficient, lightweight group that are really dedicated to try and standardizing what it is to define a, a container format and runtime. Next slide, please. So this is really about trying to meld these emerging technology areas. And how many uh, got a chance to experience or saw news about DockerCon uh, North America that happened in the June time frame in uh, North America? So at that, you heard uh, Solomon Hakes from the main stage make a big announcement about the formation of the Open Container Initiative. And that was great, because up until that point, uh, IBM and other companies have been working with Docker and talking to them about, you know, what are our options? How are we going to evolve what's been this great viral uptake in the open source code behind Docker containers and begin to mature it towards a open governance model entity? And at that conference, they announced that not only were they going to participate in the Open Container Initiative, but they were also going to contribute code to that initiative in the form of what's called Run C, or their implementation of the container standard spec. But it wasn't all altruistic, in that um, last year in the fall, 
there was a competitive project announced by a company called CoreOS. They'd been working actively with Docker, and yet they were struggling a bit because they had been trying to collaborate and um, you know, Docker's a small company, totally overwhelmed by a huge potential of opportunity. And so there was sort of a lack of uh, effective forum for which everyone to come together and have dialogues about how this should evolve. So CoreOS launched a competitive alternative to Docker called Rocket. And that also helped to kind of get the attention and get people in the industry thinking about this important concept of, you know, who should get to define a container and how should that evolve going forward. And you can see from the slide um, in front of you that you know, there's some uh, concepts that you, know, you can read and we could talk about them in the Q&A afterwards, but the most important element of this is that um, it's really no longer a situation where it's intended to be you know, Docker versus you know, Rocket and CoreOS, et cetera. Um, you know, the press likes that, it makes, you know, it sells, uh, you know, news feeds and that type of thing. But the real key element of that is that with this OCI coming together, it sets the stage to uh, resolve these conflicts. And the other last point I want to make on this slide is that, again, it's not just those two companies. It's IBM, it's CoreOS, it's Google, it's SUSE, it's Red Hat. It's all sorts of important companies coming together to help solve this problem or this challenge associated with the uh, uh, OCI. Next slide. So three things that um, I think are most important about this concept is that the open container format specification is the document that is going to be shared in open governance as part of this collaboration project under the Linux Foundation. And yes, Docker's donated the run C code, uh, and that code and the implementation spec are going to iterate back and forth as they evolve going forward under this shared governance model. And CoreOS is actually going to be a key participant. They've offered up you know, AppC as their reference implementation for their spec. We want to see those come together and resolve to a single group. But as the slide shows, it's also being driven by a lot of additional input into this process by other members of the community. And that's another key element of this, because at the end of the day, you know, if you think about it, how effective would Linux be if, you know, way back when there was a split and there were these two factions, you know, thumb wrestling over the control of how that would evolve. So it's not going to be easy, but we think it's got great potential. And so far, every uh, group is really committed to making this happen and making it a reality. And the last thing I'll say is that this is all happening in real time in that the charter documents and the membership agreements are still getting defined uh, through this community process. And if you're interested in getting involved in it as it's coming together or going forward, you know, see me after the presentation today. I'd be happy to talk to you about it a bit more. Next slide. So I thought about putting an interim slide before with this one that just said, you know, uh, IT, heart, um, buzzwords, right? Because, you know, who's heard of the CNCF? Anyone? A few? Okay, that's one of the newest elements of all of this. But if you think about it, it would be not exactly finishing the project if you came together and defined a container spec. But what about everything else that comes into play when you look to try and effectively manage container technologies? So I talked about Docker and the group announcing the OCI. That happened in June of this uh, year. One month later, uh, at the OSCON conference in North America, uh, a group of companies, including Google and IBM and others, all came together and announced this CNCF. And the idea is, containers are great, and they're so impactful. How are we going to share a common vision towards container automation and orchestration? And so the goals, as you can see here on the slide, is to start with this common container packaging approach, but to make sure it's dynamically managed in a way that's an open framework, and that it's very microservices oriented. And that's, those three key elements are going to be part of what drives the vision of the CNCF. 
It also will be a relatively lightweight, uh, min meaning that it's taking advantage of the infrastructure behind the Linux Foundation. It'll be a collaborative project of the Linux Foundation. And you can sort of see the synergies between the OCI and the CNCF. They're going to resolve their charter and membership agreements about the same time so that there's a clear end-to-end -end goal to start this initiative, right? But this isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. And if we can take a look at my last slide, you can see that there's a, a pretty impressive list of companies, not quite as broad and expansive as the OCI, but companies like AT&T, uh, Box, Cisco, Cloud Foundry, Twitter, uh, others. Um, if you, you know, think about what's happening in this space, how many are aware of Kubernetes? It was talked about during the morning keynote. That's a very impactful project from Google based upon their Borg internal infrastructure, but it's not the only type of cloud-native infrastructure project out there. You've also got the Mesos project uh, from the Apache Foundation. How many have heard of uh, Mesos? Pretty good pickup on Mesos. In addition to uh, Kubernetes and Mesos, you've got Docker Swarm, right? I mean, that's part of what caused some of the tension in the community is that 24 months ago when Docker was brand new, everybody loved Docker because it was the thing that made something, you know, uh, that was really challenging in the past, very accessible to the typical admin or developer who wanted to do um, a very DevOps, you know, cloud native type of application development. But when mid last year it became apparent that Docker's vision was beyond just container technology, but looking at it as a platform to do end-to-end -end application development. Other competitors in that space, people from kind of the Cloud Foundry ecosystem or other ecosystems, kind of got concerned. And so that's another thing that in the industry, um, we think both the OCI and the CNCF will help come together to resolve. And as you can see, the uh, high-level conceptual architectural diagram here, and my thanks to uh, my friend and colleague, Craig McLucky from Google, who contributed elements of this as a document as we're working together, again, real time and coming up with the CNCF charter and membership agreement. Uh, it gives you a high level representation of what the architecture could be as we all try and work together on this. So my last thought for this slide to leave you with is that just as the OCI targets container image portability, the CNCF targets cloud application portability. So it's all about freedom and it's all about choice for the individuals and end users. And with that, I'm gonna take it back over to Megan to um, pick up on the rest of our session. Thank you, Jeff. All right, so I'm gonna try to tie the foundation efforts into how it's kind of gonna affect Magnum. And so let's start with um, what Magnum brings to the table. So Magnum kind of set itself up from the beginning to incorporate, I guess, any uncertainty that the industry was gonna bring in terms of containers. So some of the things it brings to the table are, you know, their main goal of providing a standard container environment, not having any container strategy lock-in for its users, as well as an adaptable infrastructure for change. So in terms of a standard container environment, um, right now it supports Swarm, Kubernetes, Mesos, and these all run Docker container or manage Docker containers, which are based on Run C, which is the basis for the OCI. So we're in good shape there. And then with the CNCF, Kubernetes donated their code as kind of the starting point. And so there are some possible changes that Docker Swarm will want to align with um, as we see things progress. And a big thing, as I talked about earlier, was they didn't force anyone into a strategy. So users can see what's gonna happen with these foundations, what standards are gonna come out of it, and then they can choose what works best for them. And just being adaptable, Magnum itself supports these container orchestration engines, so a lot of the changes it's gonna inherit because it supports those and they're going to change in turn. So that'll be good for it to sync up quick with the standards. 
So kind of in short term, what Magnum is doing now, and especially throughout this week, you're going to see a lot of um, sessions and design sessions that are focusing on providing consistent networking. So right now, the container networking team is le trying to leverage Docker's lib network. That way, users of OpenStack will have a consistent container networking strategy in and out of OpenStack. But this, of course, is continually evolving. We could see you know, some results this week even on it. And or, or right following this presentation is going to be another um, session on Courier, which actually links Neutron to Lib Network, which could definitely be something positive for Magnum. And here is kind of a projection slide. So none of this is set in stone. So some things that we think Magnum is going to need to focus on in the future is, of course, adapt to you know, any results of the foundations, as well as you know, contribute back. That's what these foundations are all about. So as Jeff stated earlier, the OCI and CNCF are continuing to work on their charter and member agreements. So we're going to see changes there. But as I said, Magnum kind of is agnostic from these specific container technologies, so they should be able to pick up these changes rather easily. And just Magnum having you know, a growing user base, they're going to get requests for different user stories, which they could then give some good insight to these foundations from a production level CAS perspective. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Dan, who's going to wrap things up for us. OK, thanks, Megan. Uh, so the key takeaways here, uh, the key summary, um, basically, Containers aren't new. Um, they've evolved since the early days of Unix from CH root through all of that standardization, uh, through all of those features going into the Linux kernel for the last 15 years. And we see them going forward also collaboratively with different organizations through the OCI and through the, cloud, uh, the CNCF. So, and containerization itself is used um, all over OpenStack through many different projects. But probably the biggest impact is going to be on Kubernetes, because um, on OpenStack Magnum, because that's the one that's directly tied to the cloud orchestration engines like Kubernetes, like Mesos, and Docker Swarm. Um, and because those expose APIs directly to the end users, uh, giving the full power of the CLI and, and the, the client libraries, um, any sort of changes that go to the format, container formats or the runtimes, um, you'll need to be aware of. And finally, our, our view really is we're excited about open standards, open technology. That's what we do at IBM. Um, so it's great to see that uh, just as OpenStack has standardized infrastructure as a service as a cloud computing model, providing APIs around the compute, the network, and storage, um, as you're looking at a container solution for your organization for the longer term, um, there's, of course, so much rapid change in this area. but. Uh, looking at these standards, looking for the interoperability uh, that's provided through OpenStack and through the OCI and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, it's really something that um, you should be doing if, if you're trying to develop that containerization strategy. Um, and as we said, these are very active user groups right now, uh, very active foundations with a lot of customers um, helping define these standards, driving in the innovation. Um, and of course, we want to see people um, drive their their requirements in, their use cases, um, basically make sure that those um, standards and foundations represent the end users of both OpenStack and containers in general. As I mentioned, there's, there's a couple other sessions. If you're really interested in Magnum, a Magnum deep dive, uh, Adrian Otto, the PTL of the Magnum project, he's going to be doing a session tomorrow. Um, right after this one in this room uh, is the connection from Neutron to Lib Network. And there's a few other interesting um, talks out in the container track. Most of them, I think, are happening in this room over the next couple days. Um, there's ones there on uh, some other orchestration techniques, scaling techniques. And um, of course, there's quite a few great resources out there. In fact, one of the best ones to look at right now for the state of the art in OpenStack is a white paper called Exploring Opportunities, Containers and OpenStack, uh, that white paper. Um, just search for that. Uh, you can find it there. Uh, and finally, before we take some questions, um, we're going to post these slides right away after the talk. 
Um, so if you follow any of us on Twitter or the OpenStack hashtag, uh, you can find those. Uh, dig in there and find us at the conference. We'll be here for the next couple of days. Okay. Questions? Um, Okay, the question was, uh, what are the OpenStack Magnum Design Summit schedule? Um, I believe those would be happening on Friday. I don't know for sure. But if you look at the schedule, look for, instead of the, the general OpenStack Summit schedule, look for the Design Summit um, sessions. Okay. All right. Great, thank you.